We've let the drug war demonize recreational use. Sounds frivolous and dangerous and reckless and irresponsible, but it's, it's really not. And I think the, um, the rave movement is sort of a antidote to the fact that for many people, the religious rituals that they have just don't work. And so we've had to create our own. In 82, I came out to study with Stan Groff and Christina Groff at Esalen, and somebody came to the month-long workshop with MDMA. And at first I was unimpressed the way they described it, because I thought it's not the, the bells and whistles and the whole lightning and all this from LSD or anything. It was just quietly helps you to talk to each other and feel your emotions. And, and I was like, I feel fine already. What, what do I need it for? But I thought, I should buy some anyway <laughs> and give it a try. So I, I tried MDMA w with my girlfriend, and it was just a revelation about how profound it is. And at the same time, I realized that it was starting to be sold as ecstasy. So I, and it was also the rise of the Nancy Reagan Just Say No. So I knew that it was inevitably going to be crushed. So there were quite a number of psychologists, psychiatrists, other therapists using it kind of as a catalyst for therapy in the late 70s and early 80s. It was not a, an approved drug, but it wasn't illegal either. So in 84, I started a nonprofit before MAPS that was the whole community together, uh, the, the therapists and the, the researchers. And, and so we had a chance where it was legal to try to build a base of support and witnesses for a potential legal case. And that's where I contacted Robert Mueller at the United Nations, the Assistant Secretary General, and he helped me uh, to meet a lot of religious professionals who I sent MDMA to, and they tried it in monasteries and all these places. And, and so we ended up in, two, in 1984 the DEA moved to criminalize MDMA. And so we, I, I went to Washington and um, filed for an administrative law judge hearing, which to our utter astonishment, we won. And the judge said that MDMA should stay in Schedule 3. It should be illegal for non-medical use, but therapists and psychiatrists should be able to have it available to their patients. But then the DEA administrator overruled that and put it in Schedule 1. So that's where I started MAPS in 86. And the idea was that there is no way but through the FDA, that the drug war is too powerful, that maybe through science and medicine, we can make some progress. Right now, there's four main streams of psychedelic research going on. One is uh, MDMA for post-traumatic stress disorder. And I think that will be the first through the system. MDMA is more gentle. People don't have panic reactions so much. Our first study that we completed and published was with mostly people with um, childhood sexual abuse or rape, they all had to have had therapy and medications before and not, not been helped adequately. Among the people that um, got the MDMA with therapy, uh, basically 83% had a, a good clinical response versus 25% with the therapy only. By the end of 2021, we're hoping that MDMA would be prescription medicine. The other stream is psychedelics for end of life. People tend to be more scared of dying than they are of drugs. So if we can show that with drug-assisted psychotherapy we can help the dying process, people are willing to listen. And I think that's really important. We haven't touched their disease process. They still experience the pain. They're still dealing with the fact that they're going to leave their loved ones or their children. In some cases, the, our parents of, uh, of uh, of kids who are who are young, um, that sadness is still there, but there's also a larger framing of that, and so it's very touching. And then the third strand is psychedelics for the treatment of addiction. We decided to tackle uh, cigarette smoking addiction. We've treated uh, 13 uh, people to date, most of whom are completely abstinent from smoking after their first psilocybin session. And then the fourth strand of research is psychedelic neuroscience, to really understand consciousness and understand uh, how the brain functions. An uh, analogy that you could use to describe how the drug affects brain activity is either to say that brain activity becomes relatively disordered, or disorganized in the state. Another thing that you could say is that it's not entire disorder, that rather it's more like the brain enters a more kind of anarchic state. And perhaps the, the most interesting finding is that the, the, the frontal cortex, that's uh, perhaps the, the command and control center of the brain, uh, diminishes its activity and other, 
other brain areas take control. And this is the way how uh, uh, stored information that's not usually available to consciousness starts reaching consciousness. MDMA is terrific for couples therapy, for just uh, relationships. Now, rela having a difficult relationship is not a disease. That's why we're not doing, we have to focus on diseases for political reasons to try to get drugs through the FDA. But I think we would have a lot more happy people and a lot more successful relationships if people were assisted with MDMA to talk to each other and to acknowledge and listen better. If this is in fact something that can help a lot of people and the, we're at this stage of the research which is um, you know at least 20 years behind where it would be if people if it had been guided only by science and not by politics and fears and other forces that's really actually a, a travesty. So there's a growing consensus among scientists that drug laws and prohibition around psychedelic drugs is irrational it's unhelpful. Maybe it'll be like the 40 years in the desert. You know, if we're the, at the end of the 40 years, maybe I'll finally have the opportunity to become a legal psychedelic therapist. In the promised land. In the promised land and in the glorious future where psychedelics are integrated and people are balanced and we're not so scared of people different than us and people are, have shifted from fundamentalism to sort of direct spirituality and people look at the drug war as one of the worst policies in the history of America and we think, now let's party. <laughs> I shouldn't say that part, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean